Right, so firstly, if you're not a fan of review video, product review videos, um, I can only apologise, but uh, basically they seem to do pretty well on YouTube, and uh, I quite like gadgets, so I've not got an issue with having a look at products, and just to say, I buy these myself, this is not, um, you know, sponsored, no one gives me these products, it's uh, my decision to review them, basically. So, what we've got here is uh, two types of jump starter. So we've got this uh, Sealy uh, super capacitor one and uh, Yabba, uh, I think it's a lithium iron or it might be, it's definitely a lithium style battery jump starter which uh, claims to have higher amp output and should be able to start a car. And generally, I've got to be honest, they do work. It um, works well. So what we we'll do is um, we'll look at both of them individually and then I'll uh, have a closer look at the Sealy and you get an idea of how the Sealy is different and why in my opinion it is um, a much better device to have as a jump starter. Although um, expensive, the life cycle for supercapacitors is um, in the million so in theory it should last years. So we'll have a quick look at the Yabba, there's nothing complicated to it and then we'll move on to the Sealy. So this is the Yabba, I think I got this on Amazon, probably for about 17, oh sorry, 70 quid, maybe a bit more than that, about a year ago. So what I need is a jump starter that's compact and uh, does the job. So this is the actual unit and you've got your jump lead, so to speak, here. So, yeah, the unit's pretty straightforward. It's got a battery indicator light. You just hopefully see the four of lit, lit up. And then you've got your um, pulse here. So you've got uh, USB outputs. Okay, that there, USB outputs there. So you can use this as like a power bank. You've got an um, LED light there. And then you've got two inputs, a micro USB and a type c usb so that they will charge the device so you don't need a 12 volt supply for this you could actually in theory well you can charge it inside your car using a cigarette lighter it does take a while though and then you've got these fused leads and this connector which uh, fits fits in here like that so the bonus of this is it's really lightweight it's easy to carry around um, a nice little carrier case that it comes with. So yeah, I've used this on my Honda S2000 just to start it to test the device. I've also tried to use it on diesels um, and it does struggle there because if the battery is particularly depleted and what you find is when you start the glow plugs on the diesel, this will just kill it. It will just flatten them straight away. Um, this hasn't got a huge battery in it. Remember, it's designed to put out a huge amount of amps, but with very little capacity. So the glow plug will uh, effectively just cane the battery and bring it down to zero. I have found with some diesel engines, what I've had to do is connect this up, let it discharge the power inside it to the diesel, and then um, recharge this and then do the same again. That's obviously inconvenient because it takes a good few hours to charge this. But if you're desperate, it will get you out of a bind. So yeah, that's the Yabba. Uh, there's lots of information about these online. And to be honest, they're pretty good. Let's have a look at the spec on the back of it. Waterproof car jump starter, 1500 or 15,000 milliamp hour battery. And then you've got all your inputs and what it's capable of. And this is a model YR100. So let's now have a look at the Sealy. So the Sealy is a completely different beast. Uh, the whole way it works is different. I think this is a much better way of jump starting a car. Just think it's more high tech. And normally if you were stuck and you needed someone to help start your car, then uh, you could date, you've got a friend coming over to start jump start it. They can stick this in their uh, USB, charge it up, and then by the time they get to you, it'll be ready connect the leads up and away you go. So you get a few things with this. You get this little screw, uh, screwdriver, little spanner. I suppose this is for disconnecting battery terminals. That's all I can imagine. And you get a cigarette lighter. 
charger. Um, but that is the secondary method of charging. And this, uses, this is actually quite clever. It uses some clever stuff inside it to work. So we'll just get it out of the box and then we'll have a further look. So if I turn this, hopefully you can see, I'll tilt this this way. Hopefully you can see the uh, display. So what we've got here is five volt, seven volt, nine volt, 11 volt, 12 volt, 13 volt, 14 volt. Now your average car battery to start will need 12 and a half volts. I think that's fully charged. So around the 12 volts to start it. Anything around 11, you're gonna struggle. So what this device actually does that makes it really clever is you can have a car battery that won't start the car but has still got quite a lot of energy stored in it, just that it won't be capable of discharging that energy fast enough to turn the engine over. So what you do is you connect this, connect these leads to the battery, the positive and negative, and say the battery voltage is nine volts um, on the car, that nine volts will still be able to charge this up to 14. So this inside it has got, a, obviously must have some form of charging circuit, um, but also you can, I pop this, you've got that cigarette lighter charger there, and then you've got a micro USB. So this can be charged up fully via micro USB and be able to start a car. So to just demonstrate how this would work, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll use the Yabba and use that as if that's the car battery. So you'll, you'll get an idea of how this charges up. So what I'm gonna do is connect the Yabba leads to this and then you'll see this illuminate and then it will go through the procedure of um, starting the car. I might try it on my Honda S2000, but it does have a tendency to mess up the radio codes, but it gives you a good understanding of how the device works. So I'll connect the Yabba up and then we'll see these lights start charging. Right, there you go, and hopefully you can see that that is basically saying that it's ready. It's fully charged at 14 volts. So if we follow the instructions, connect clamps to vehicle battery, which is done. Press on and off to energize unit. I press on, there you go. Right, now you can see the super capacitors are charging. Now, because that's obviously got a quite healthy battery, it's not going to take long to do that. Up to 12 volts. 13 volts. Now, one of the things I will say is this, this sums up the Yabba. Now, it might have worked well when I first got it, but it's now struggling. So it's not um, holding much. So the battery indicator on the Yabba has now actually gone from four fully charged four um, indicator dots to empty. And just to charge up this uh, capacitor, it, that's pretty crap really. So this is now ready to jump start a car. So it says if diesel preheat is required, press glow plug. So obviously that would um, discharge some of this into the glow plug, which will mean that this will still have enough juice to start it. Then it says operate uh, ignition to preheat, start the vehicle. So you just literally start it now and jobs are good and it would work. And that's it. Simple device, doesn't have any batteries. There's nothing to wear in this super capacitor. Obviously you could have leads become damaged over time, but that could happen to any of these. And uh, it is it is definitely the way to go in the future because it's quite compact and um, from my experience with supercapacitors, it will definitely do the job. So what we do, I think, is uh, I'll test this on my S2000 by disconnecting the battery and we'll see if this has got the juice to start it. Uh, this is gonna be quite a difficult test uh, for this unit because my S2000 has got the um, wideband sensor and all the traction control uh, off of a battery live. So as soon as you turn the ignition, they'll all be pulling amps. So they'll be trying to pull power out of this to power them. So it'll be an interesting test. I think this will work. We'll give it a go. So what you should be able to see there is I've got my, it's a bit dark there, sorry about that. My positive and my negative there completely disconnected from my battery and I'll connect them up to the electric starter and we'll see what happens. 
So obviously with this sort of thing, obviously be careful with polarities. So that's the positive connected. So that's those two connected. I'll press on. That's showing 14 volts. Then we'll try and start the car. Now what I will do is I won't hang around because obviously I'll just start the car and then stop it because uh, not having a, a battery connected can damage the alternator. So what I'll do is put the key in um, and try and start it as soon as the fuel pump's finished priming. Oh, I must have done something wrong with this. I actually misread the instructions a bit, so let's try this again. If the battery's damaged, then this is what you should do. Set it off. Switch it on. Hold this down. There you go. Override. Now hopefully the car will start. Let's have a look. Look at that, starts easily. I think you'll agree, that's pretty impressive. And you can just see it um, switched off now. That is very impressive. So yeah, it just takes a bit of mucking about. So that's just basically simulated a, a battery being completely knackered on the car and it started it no problem. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, just goes to show technology is moving. I'm impressed with that. I actually think that started faster on the starter motor with this than it does with a normal battery, which goes to say a lot about the uh, sheer amount of power this thing's able to put out. And another good thing about this, it's got um, polarity protection, so there's no chance of you um, accidentally shorting out the battery and it's also after a couple of days capacitors will naturally use lose their charge so it will just discharge itself so that means it's safe there's no chance of this exploding not much chance of that exploding but these batteries can fail and when they do generally it ends in fire so um yeah this won't do that the capacitor will just discharge it'll sit there for a year two years and then when you need it capacitors will just charge up and it will do the job so i'm very impressed with that um, hopefully you're impressed with it as well the way it started the car and just to double check in case people didn't believe me that is still disconnected and the car started as you saw without issue so I definitely recommend one of those it costs a bit more money but i think long term you'll save money because it won't fail whereas batteries like that yabba one over time will de uh, deteriorate and fail. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe for more.